Welcome to Yellow Texas, and this is our team of traveling Texans. Ride shotgun with us as we visit breathtaking views. Trips like this are the reason I love Texas. Viva Terlingua! Check out heart racing attractions. <laughs> and taste mouth-watering foods this great state has to offer. Just dig in. Now, this isn't your normal baked potato. That is perfection. Why, you ask? Well, to simply put it, YOLO! You only live once, Texas. Howdy, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Yellow Texas. I'm your host, AC, and we are so excited to share this one with you today because we are focusing on traveling down I-10. Constructed in the 1960s, I-10 serves more than 200,000 vehicles daily, and through this corridor are several stops off the highway with small towns that are rich in Texas history and unique in their own ways. So for this episode, we've gathered up all the hosts for a trip highlighting the I-10 Alliance, and first up is Seguin. When you think of the top places in Texas, sure, the big cities come to mind. But really, it's the small towns that give this state its character, and that includes the town of Seguin. Today, we're gonna find out why this city is so sweet and also a little nutty. So Kyle, Seguin is one of several towns that make up the I-10 Alliance. First, what is the Alliance and who is a part of it? The Central Texas I-10 Community Alliance, it's um, a consortium of cities between Houston and San Antonio along the I-10 corridor that work to promote tourism for the region. Our tagline is just a little off. Uh, just as a reminder to the people that if you're traveling from Houston to San Antonio or, or vice versa, that if there's a lot to explore and see and do, just getting off I-10 for a little bit. What is the ultimate goal of the I-10 Alliance? To really promote um, our cultural heritage um, for the Alliance, or all our communities among the Alliance, um, and just, you know, bring in some additional revenue and remind people in the, the larger cities that there's lots to see and do in our small towns. Seguin is also known as the pecan capital of Texas and is home to the largest pecan in the country, a 16-foot masterpiece that sits right outside the Nutcracker Museum. Well, Mr. Pape had a passion for pecans. He started collecting the nutcrackers. He has over 8,000 nutcrackers here in this museum, so people can go crazy finding every type of nutcracker. How would you describe the vibe or the character of downtown Seguin? Seguin is very historic. It's a cute downtown. You come here, you want to go shopping, you want to eat at the cute restaurants. We have beautiful places. You're going to definitely want to check out Southern Good downtown. And then Sweet Treats is an amazing bakery if you like cupcakes. They yes. make a really good pecan pie cupcake. That sounds amazing. I think we got to go check out that cupcake. Yes. And also maybe do a little shopping as well. Definitely. Let's do it. If you're traveling down I-10 and need a little sugar pick-me-up, Sweet Treats in Seguin is the place to be. Kami Holmes wakes up at 4 a.m. each morning to bake her famous cupcakes from scratch. And the Cupcake Queen even gave me a few pointers. Okay, Kami, we got our gloves on, masks on, I'm ready to go. You ready? I'm ready. All How right, do Ms. you Jill. make the Kami cupcake? Well, first of all, you have to start with cupcake. Okay. <laughs> Right. This is our birthday sprinkle cupcake with our birthday sprinkle buttercream. What you want to know about uh, when you uh, ice a frosted cupcake is you want to have a tip and you want to, you don't want to fill your bag too, too much. Okay. So you want to kind of start in the middle, get it going, and then start your swirl. Oh, wow. You made that look easy, Connie. There you go. Ready? Three, two, one. Come on, Jill. I got this. I got this. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Now, Jill, you didn't see me go back that way. No, I didn't. <laughs> Look at you. I added but that's a good. Something. You know what? That's good for your first time. Okay, that's thank good for you. your first thank time. You. Now, get you, let's get us some sprinkles. Okay, sprinkles. Now, that now, is a cupcake. Now, that's a cupcake. Girl. That's a cupcake. Look at you. I love that. You're a cupcake <laughs> pro. Sweet Treats is known for its deliciously unique flavors, like the maple bacon bourbon pecan chocolate chip cupcake and seasonal favorite pecan pie. Okay, so let me tell you about pecan pie. It has a caramel center, and then it has the brown sugar buttercream, and then it has homemade pecan pie on top. Wow. Go and get your good bite, Jill. Mm -hmm. Get it, girl. Mm. Look at that. Ain't that good? Mm. Ain't that good? That's Y'all, so I know it. I know it. Oh, so good. I get so excited when people like my stuff. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's a good cupcake. Thank you, baby. You make great cupcakes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad you liked it. 
Hey y'all, we are here in Gonzales, Texas, one of the earliest American settlements in the state. It's home of the old 18 and the first battle in the Texas Revolution. So let's take a look back in time at this former Texian settlement. Home of the come and take it cannon, the significance of Gonzales is like no other Texas town. Mr. Bob Richard told the story honoring the old 18 who protected the cannon in 1835. On September 29th, with the Mexican troops demanding the cannon, there were 18 of us available to defend the town. We come from strong people. We come from strong heritage. We are unique, and our story is unique. No town can say, this is where the Texas Revolution started. No town can make that statement. Inspired by the preservation of our Texas history, we made our way to the Gonzalez Memorial Museum. All right, y'all, here it is, the original cannon. Take a look at it and all of its glory. Fun fact, the flag that flew with the cannon was actually fashioned out of a wedding dress. A Texian is anyone who fought for Texas independence. And it's so timely right now. It crosses all racial and ethnic boundaries. It was a struggle against a despot, and it was all the people who came together in that struggle to win Texas's independence. So you're seeing a tiny little bit of the Ballad of Gonzales. Our life in Gonzales was trying. Defending our home from all harm. Good citizens all, we put out the call for a cannon to strengthen our arms. But then came the Mexican soldiers to strip us of our treasured pride. The old 18 stood, they stood for the good. And so come, come and take it, it, we cried. There is no shortage of history in Gonzales, but this Texas town has so much to offer. Everything from a beautiful downtown square to some fabulous shopping. And if you're looking to satisfy your appetite, look no further than Baker Boys Barbecue. So it uh, started me and my dad. Um, you know, we did competition barbecue. It's always been our hobby. Always threw around the idea of uh, opening our own barbecue place. The timing of it just worked out. This spread looks absolutely beautiful and I know our crew has already tasted Baker Boys at the Texas Monthly Barbecue Festival. So can you tell me a little bit about the barbecue festival and how y'all got on the list? Daniel Vaughn, the barbecue editor for Texas Monthly came in and um, tried everything. Really didn't believe it until the magazine came out. It's a great honor. You know as far as Texas barbecue, it's a dream come true. It's as good as it gets. Stick around, more from Gonzales, Texas after the break. Hey y'all, welcome back to the show where Ariel is picking up right where she left off in Gonzales, Texas. You have quite the spread for us today. Yeah, so um, starting over here, we've got our uh, brisket. Is there a perfect way to cook brisket? So that's the thing about barbecue, is there everybody's got their own technique. That melts uh, in your mouth. It has, um, is that like an oaky? We use oak charcoal, oak briquettes. That's delicious. And the next meal we have our smoked turkey breast, and I like to think that we have one of the better smoked turkey breasts around. That's like the juiciest turkey breast I've ever <laughs> tasted. In it's definitely not Thanksgiving. Turkey. No, it's not Thanksgiving turkey, it's Texas turkey. Uh, our pork ribs, they're a dry rub. It's got a beautiful color. I mean, it fell off the bone. Oh my gosh, that was perfect. I have no words, that was great. Gonzalez is full of passion, history, and good old Texas barbecue. So when you make your way out here to see the famous cannon and where the fight for Texas independence began, don't forget to come and taste it too. Hey y'all, and welcome to Cuero, the turkey capital and also the heart of South Texas. Located about 85 miles away from Austin and San Antonio and Corpus and about 103 miles away from Houston, Cuero is centrally located so that folks near and far can come out and visit and enjoy. Cuero Main Street is a designated Main Street program under the Texas Historic Commission since 2013. Uh, we have several beautiful outstanding boutiques. We have award-winning museums, four of them in our town. We have a mural art collection. We look forward to people coming and spending their days in downtown Cuero. So I hear there's a bunch of events that happen here too. So what can we look forward to this year? 
So we have Cuero's Christmas in the Park coming up. It's a free event. It's a self-guided driving tour. We have 250 lighted displays, over 300 snowflakes. This will be our 21st year. It creates what Christmas is really about. So Guero is home to four history museums. So if you want to learn how to be a true cowboy, make sure to stop at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Museum. Chisholm Trail's Heritage Museum is a wonderful museum. Our main goal is to capture the history of the cattle drives and the ranching tradition of South Central Texas yeah. post-Civil War. So we're basically covering er eras from 1866 up until the 1890s, early 20th century. But more importantly, we're also trying to capture the story of the cowboy. The cowboy is such a part of American folklore and that lone rider, well, you get to learn a little bit about the cowboy, how they came to be, and how there are still tons of cowboys out there today. So as you can see here, we have all the different cowboys of the Americas. We have the Uruguayan gaucho, we have the Chilean Waso. My favorite, the Venezuelan Llaneros, and then probably most important for understanding Texas Cowboys, the Mexican Vaquero. Yes, the Vaqueros. Yes, <laughs> yes, and a lot of the things that you get with the Texas Cowboy has to come from the Spanish tradition and mainly the Vaquero tradition. The sombrero, the use of yeah. that by the Vaqueros, then the Cowboys copied it because you need it when you're down here in the hot sun of yes. Texas. So yeah. even though the Spanish went everywhere, Wherever they went, they brought the cowboy with them. And they might look a little different, but at the end of the day, they're all cowboys. So being here in the turkey capital has got me thinking a lot about Thanksgiving. And what goes best with that big old feast? Well, pecan pie, which brings us to the pecan house. This business was originally started in 1960 and it was just a seasonal business where they opened up and bought and sold pecans yeah. for a couple months out of the year. When my parents bought in 2003, they expanded it with the kitchen and uh, allowed it to become year round. And now we have a, a very strong business yeah. where we make pecan pies, bread pudding, casseroles, all kind of great pecan treats. Cheers. Thanks, AC, for coming out and visiting Cuero today. I hope you had a great time. Yeah. And course. we couldn't let you leave without visiting our famous Ruby Begonia. Oh my goodness, it's Ruby, y'all. Check it out, this beautiful, beautiful bird in the turkey capital. Thank you so much for having us out here. Yes. Make sure you come out to Cuero's because it's a great place to stay, to play, to eat, to shop. All the things you could do right here in the small town. In 2005, the Texas State Legislature named Schulenburg the official home of the Painted Churches. Out of 30 Painted Churches in the state, six of them are located right here in this former German settlement. We're going to take a look around and show you some big sights in this small town. Well, we were founded in 1873 and we're mostly of German and Czech descendants. We have three museums in this little town. The Schulenburg Historical Museum, the Stansel Model Aircraft Museum, mm -hmm. and then we have the Texas Czech Music Museum. Why do you think this is the best place for people to visit? The painted churches can take you a whole day. You have to go see the painted churches. More from Schulenburg after the break. Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas, where Tessa is exploring Schulenburg, Texas. Behind me is St. Mary's Church High Hill, and this is one of the six painted churches located in Schulenburg. And this church is known as the queen of the painted churches. So let's go check it out. This is one of the painted churches. It's, uh in the big city of High Hill. This is the location, High Hill is where Schulenburg first settled. Back in the uh, 1873, the railroad 
connected from San Antonio to Galveston and a lot of the farmers wanted to move closer to the railroad for access to freight and things like that. They tried to emulate the style of worship and churches that they had in Europe when they immigrated to the United States. And so they wanted to use this Gothic style of architecture, uh, the stained glass windows, they have that in common. There's a style of uh, artistry on the columns and around the baseboards. It's beautiful. As soon as I walked in, I was just like in awe. I was amazed. I didn't know what to expect, but it's gorgeous. What do you think makes these painted churches so special and why should people come and tour them? Well, I think it's the, uh, the dedication and the reverence that people still hold. Well, thank you so much for telling me more about these beautiful churches. I'm excited to see more. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. I'm glad that you all decided to come to Schulenburg. And as our chamber said, we're halfway to everywhere. These are some of the toys that they made, and this was really popular back in the 50s. They sold toys all over the world. They would produce 6,000 to 7,000 products a day. This huge piece of equipment was responsible for making all of the plastic for the toy planes. And fun fact about this is that they actually had to build the factory around this massive machine. Pretty cool, huh? All right guys, so these are the two famous trigger jets. Now, let's give these bad boys a try. Two, three. Oh, look at it! Oh my gosh, how cool! As y'all can see, Schulenberg has stood here for generations and they still maintain close ties to their Czech and German heritage. So, next time you guys are driving down I-10, don't forget to stop by. Just off of I-10 is Columbus, Texas, a town where you can encounter truly one-of-a-kind experiences, everything from a Santa Claus museum to a wildlife park, which is where we're headed first. From the legendary 1886 Stafford Opera House to the Abram Alley's Log Cabin and the Antique Tool Museum, there's no shortage of historical Texas culture right in this charming community of Columbus. But we're starting our day with something brand new in the area, Hatari Wildlife Park. Enjoy some of the rarest animals in the world right from your own vehicle as you travel the wide open spaces of this 400 acre land. Equipped with a petting zoo. It's a delicious, it's like a little protein bar for you. And puzzles the carrot loving giraffe. Oh, okay. <laughs> this park is fun for the entire family. More from Columbus, Texas after the break. Hey y'all, welcome back to Yellow Texas, where Ariel is touring Columbus and is currently sitting down with the owners of Hitari Wildlife Park. So tell us what visitors can expect when they come through the gates. Yeah, so it's both a driving tour and a walking uh, tour portion through it. And so they'll get a chance to uh, be able to see the animals and feed them as well on the driving portion and the walking, which is the uh, boardwalk that we have here. Y'all are a hidden gem here in Texas. Y'all are right off of I-10, just minutes outside of Columbus. Yeah. Right. Tell us why. Well, you know, it's a short ride from, from Katy and from Houston. It takes about 50 minutes to get here, and we're one mile, you know, mile and a half off of I-10. So it makes a great location for families to come and not have a long ride. Okay, perfect. And what are we going to do today? We're going to go on a safari? What we do today is we'll get on one, we'll do a tour around the place and uh, feed some of the animals and just have a, uh, a great ride. Oh, y'all are so cute. Look at that little one. Those eyelashes are so on point. It takes some blessings from you. <laughs> All right, y'all, it's almost that time of year, my favorite time of year, Christmas, and we are about to see the only museum in the South dedicated to Santa Claus. I'm a Christmas fanatic and I'm just, I'm in La La Land right now, or I'm in the North Pole right now. <laughs> so, We're glad. Yeah, so tell me, tell me about the museum and what inspired it. 
It began in 1990 when Mary Elizabeth Hopkins uh, passed away and she had an extensive Santa collection. How many Santas are here in the building? We estimate over 4,000. Visitors who come here, when can they come or is it just December? We are actually open year round, but January to November, it's by appointment only. Then in December, we take uh, Fridays and Saturdays this year um, every you know of every week and are open from um, 11 to 4 and admission is free. I'm going to go through and see if I can see all of the Santas. Well enjoy <laughs> and thank you so much. It's origami made out of pages from a Reader's Digest magazine. <laughs> Santa has moves. All right, y'all, next time y'all are traveling down I-10, make sure to stop by Columbus. You can even download their app to see the places we visited today, see where you can stay, and check out all the great restaurants that are here. And you can never come to Columbus without stopping by Dairy Cone. I'll see y'all on the road. All right, y'all, that is a wrap on today's travels. We hope you learned a little bit more about I-10 through this special episode, you know, from the pecan delicacies of Seguin to the come and take it Texie and pride of Gonzales to the turkey capital of Cuero, the German traditions of Schulenburg, and to the unique history of a Texas original Columbus. There is plenty to discover on your drive down Interstate 10. We'd like to give a big thanks to the I-10 Alliance for guiding us along the way. You have truly made each experience so special for each one of us. Unfortunately, that can close the end of our show. If you want more travel ideas, just head on over to our website, yellowtx.com. Follow us on our social media pages and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Until next time, remember, it is a big world, so get out there and explore it. You know what they say, you only live once, Texas. See y'all.